Welcome all of you, Reverend Mark Abernethy, back here for installment number seven of At the Foot of the Cross. I'm in the middle of reading a book right now, about halfway through. It's a book called Fall and Rise, the story of 9-11. And it's written by a man named Mitchell, it's either Zukoff or Zukoff, I'm not sure. He used to be a reporter for the Boston Globe at the time of 9-11. He's currently a professor at Boston University. It's a fairly long book, so I'm not sure I would recommend it to everybody, especially if you're a person who likes shorter books or you're a person who likes fiction books. This is clearly nonfiction. And it might, you might wonder why I'm reading that particular book in the midst of this coronavirus crisis. There's a couple of reasons why I'm reading that book. One is that I started reading it <clears throat> a while ago before the the quarantine and the social isolation started in earnest. And the second reason why I'm reading the book uh, is that it occurs to me that 9-11 was the last time this country went through a crisis on a broad scale, the way we're going through um, the quarantining and the, the um, pandemic that is the coronavirus right at this moment. So it's fascinating to sort of compare and contrast the way in which the country dealt with 9-11 now almost 20 years ago, and the way in which we are dealing with the coronavirus pandemic today. One of the best parts of the book, Fall and Rise, is the way in which Mitchell Zukoff or Zukov tells the story of the people who were involved in the tragedy that particular day. It's just amazing to me the way in which he talks about the people who boarded the flights and the people who were on the ground at the World Trade Towers and the people who were first responders that day and the people who were loved ones of anyone who was in that category, the people who were air traffic controllers and the people who were um, sort of politicians and people who were either prepared or not as prepared as they thought they might have been for what happened that day. It's just fascinating to get into get a window into the lives of those people. It makes the story come alive in new and um, compassionate ways, at least for me as a reader. I think whenever there is a tragedy or sort of a, a crisis of this scope in the country or in the world, you and I tend to get caught up in things like statistics and numbers and how many people have the virus and how many people are sick and how many people are hospitalized and we kind of look at the percentages and we look at the outcomes and we try and figure out you know what date things might return to normal and how long the quarantining is going to last and we did some of those same things back during 9-11 we talked about the number of people who were on the planes and the people who died at ground zero and the people who um, were sort of left behind in that tragedy as America tried to cope with the devastation of that event. But one of the things I really like about the book, as I was saying, is that it tells the story of each of a lot of the people who were involved in 9-11. And it reminds me, instead of getting caught up in the statistics of that event, to think about the people whose lives were impacted most directly. And I'm thinking about that now as I'm reading through that book related to people whose lives are impacted most directly by this coronavirus pandemic. It's not all about the number of people who are sick in China or the number of people who have contracted the virus in Italy or the number of people sick in the United States or in Connecticut or South Windsor or New York or whatever we, we may want to say. The point is that each of those people that have contracted the virus or are afraid of catching the virus or are responding to the virus in all kinds of different ways and the people who have died already from the virus, they all have their own stories and those stories are worth remembering, particularly as people of faith because each of the people who have been impacted by this current pandemic is precious in the sight of God. They are precious in the eyes of God. And I think it's important for us not to get caught up in numbers and statistics, but to remember that 
this particular pandemic, this quarantine, this isolation that we are all living through is having real impacts on the lives of people. Even if we've never met them, their stories are valuable and precious and worth lifting up. This isn't just some um, virus that we can keep at arm's distance. And it's not something that can be qualified or quantified simply by statistics and numbers. There are real people going through what all of us are going through. And it's important to remember those stories and to pray for people, even people we have never met, because we trust that we are walking by God's side and, and through this pandemic. And when we walk by God's side, we try our very best to see things from God's perspective and through God's eyes, even with our human limitations. So if we recognize and realize that all of the people affected by this pandemic are precious in the sight of God, each of those people is also precious in our own sight. And it's a way in which we can be more prayerful and um, more hopeful and more compassionate and more sympathetic as people of faith to think about the real lives that are being affected day by day. So I leave you with that thought and hopefully time for good reading, whatever it is you may be reading on your end. God bless.